my hope is that by the end of this talk, when you see packaged, processed, and pre-made food, you'll ask yourself one very simple question. Can I print that? Can I print that using a 3D food printer? Now, some of you might not know what a 3D food printer is, let alone a 3D printer. That's OK. Up until a year and a half, two years ago, I had no idea either. I found out about 3D printing when my husband came home from work and told me that he now has a 3D printer in the office. I had no idea what he was talking about. So I asked him to explain. He told me he could print things like cups, bowls, toys, jewelry, replacement parts for my refrigerator, and casings for computers. That's why his company bought it. OK. But I didn't get it. It took me a long time to wrap my head around, how did a printer print a three-dimensional object? So for those of you that may be having the same issue, let me give you a very brief, simple description of the concept of 3D printing. So visualize a regular printer that prints ink on a sheet of paper, such as this. Hello. 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 Now imagine that piece of paper got stuck in your printer, and it kept printing hello over and over and over again until you end up with something like this. It's hello with height. So I did not print this with normal ink, obviously, but I did print it in a 3D printer that uses plastic as the ink. And it kept printing layer after layer after layer building up until we got this three-dimensional object. Got it? Great. By the way, this piece took over 100 layers of plastic, seven hours to print. 3D food printing is faster. <laughs> so about a year ago, my husband again introduced me to a company that makes 3D printers, but with a twist. Rather than using plastic as the ink, as many 3D printers do, this company used food. Food. My first reaction to this was not so positive. <laughs> Let me explain. So I consider myself to be a healthy eater. But this company did two things with food that didn't match with my view. One, they only printed foods on the sweet side of the market. Chocolate, sugar, cakes, tarts, cookies, sweet things. Secondly, the only way you can print these sweet things was by using their pre-filled food capsules. When I heard that, I got images of additives and preservatives, processed food, not healthy. So sweet side of the food market, processed food, my healthy eating habits, opposite side of the spectrum. So I questioned it. Why couldn't 3D food printers print sweet and savory foods? Why couldn't 3D food printers print snacks and meals? And perhaps most importantly, why couldn't 3D food printers use real, fresh, wholesome, healthy ingredients and not force people to always use a pre-filled food capsule? The company ended up changing to my way of thinking, so I ended up joining, because with this way of thinking, I really do believe that 3D food printers can help us eat healthier. Now, we might disagree on what is healthy. You might have disagreements on what creates a healthy diet. But I think that we know that with the overabundance of <coughs> processed food in the supermarket, we rely on a lot of packaged food, a lot of pre-made food. That's not healthy. So look at how manufacturers make this food. So they make it in big manufacturing plants. And actually, they use quite a bit of the 3D printing technology processing that food. So some of you are already eating 3D printed food. It's just coming out of a bigger food factory. Now imagine that food factory shrunk down to the size of a box that sits on your counter. That's a 3D food printer. That's a mini manufacturing plant in your kitchen. So imagine now, rather than buying this prepackaged food that we become accustomed to, you print it. 
You print it using healthy, fresh ingredients. You make it healthier than that package version. You make it faster than you could doing it by hand or with any other kitchen appliance. And you have fun at the same time. So let me show you. So this is me sitting next to a 3D food printer. The reason why I'm showing you this photo is so you can see the size of the 3D food printer. It's the size of a microwave. So the food goes in the top, prints on the bottom. So what kind of food does a 3D food printer print? Lettuce, salad, steak? No. With our idea, the idea is not to take chemicals or other forms of food substitutes or other foods to create foods that really exist. Our idea is to use these fresh, natural, wholesome foods to help us make snacks and meals. So why would you want to 3D print food? Where's the pain point? Where's the pain point in the kitchen that's helping, that 3D food printing can help with? Can it help you make a vegetable stew? No, you don't need 3D food printing for that. That's a one pot meal. But think about your favorite packaged foods that may require shaping, or if you were gonna make it by hand, a lot of repetitive tasks, such as forming breadsticks, shaping pretzels. Think about food that has layers, like our layered hello, or that require assembly, such as ravioli. Ravioli is a really good example for people to understand how 3D food printing can help us. So how many of you have made homemade ravioli at home? Not too many, despite all the pasta makers on the market. Now I'll tell you why. It's a pain. <laughs> now the pain point is not making the dough necessarily or making the filling. The pain point, the time consuming part, the repetitive work is forming that ravioli getting a thin layer of dough, adding your layer of filling, getting another thin layer of dough on top of that, and cutting it to size. But think about that. We're talking about layers. Look at our layered hello. And we're doing individual layers. So let's print it. OK, so this is printing the base layer, adding the filling right there, and printing another layer. I sped this up for purposes of the presentation. But you're looking at a minute and 30 seconds per ravioli. It's printing individual ravioli. It's using fresh, wholesome food. When it's done printing, you simply have to cook it like you would any other ravioli. You either boil it, or in this case, we actually didn't stop the picture. We actually put it in the oven for a modern twist and baked it. But you may have noticed from the briefness of it that it was actually brown. Well, why is it brown? It's brown because we chose to use whole wheat flour. So we used whole wheat flour to make the dough. For the filling, it was a pumpkin, basil, mushroom, and spices. It was all fresh food. It was delicious. It was freshly made ravioli. We sprinkled some cheese and olive oil on top and served it with the sauce. Now, I challenge you to find that food combination in a prepackaged version. It's very hard to find whole wheat pasta dough. We're at the mercy of what manufacturers decide to produce for us. And if you don't like that flavor combination, don't use it. It's fresh food. Use whatever food combination you want. If you have allergies or intolerances, don't put it in your food. Since you control what's going in it, you don't have to worry about cross-contamination of factories. Make it fresh yourself. So we still do chocolate. It's just not the only thing we do. So this is a chocolate Christmas tree that we made. We made edible Christmas ornaments last year. We sprinkled it with some powdered sugar for the snow. The reason why I'm showing you this is because I want you to open your minds about 3D food printing and don't just think about a final object that comes out of the printer and it's done, like the ravioli. When the ravioli print it, we just had to cook it, it was done. This did not come out of the 3D printer this way. The way we print, gravity would work against us. It wouldn't work. So what we did is we printed each individual intricate layer. And when it was all done, like a puzzle, we stacked it up. We used strawberry jam as the glue to hold the layers together. And we created this tree. So with 3D food printing, it's not print it all or don't print it at all. You can actually print pieces of dishes that you may complete later by hand. So again, you're looking for the pain point. 
to make these individual chocolate layers by hand, very difficult, very time consuming, repetitive work, very intricate. So you let the 3D food printer do it for you. This is all real chocolate, it's fresh chocolate. There is nothing different about the chocolate here. This is spinach quiche dinosaurs and I wanna stop here and tell you a brief story. So I'm a mother to a five-year-old boy and a three-year-old girl. I'm a healthy eater. I try to instill my healthy eating on my kids. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And when it doesn't, I try to sneak in the veg. I think they got wise to this. They're a bit suspicious of my food sometimes. So one day I made a spinach quiche, which is basically a savory pie, and I served it as such. It was a round shape, a pie shape. I served it to my kids and said, you know, this is dinner, and they looked at it, asked why it was green, and got really suspicious. <laughs> so I talked them through it, finally convinced them to try a piece, but they said they didn't like it. Fine, not everybody likes every food. But then I tried an experiment. A week later, I found my son's toy dinosaurs in his bedroom, and I used the same exact recipe to print it. So we print it in the shape of dinosaurs. So this is printing the dinosaurs. It takes about a minute and a half for each dinosaur for both layers, both the dough and the spinach topping. My kids came home from school, and I presented them with a dish of about 15 dinosaurs on them. Again, they were suspicious. They asked, why is it green and brown? Well, your dinosaurs are green and brown, so I made it the same way. <laughs> so actually, I don't know if you can see very well, but there's actually a brown stripe down the dinosaur's back, you know, which is very accurate to the toy dinosaurs. People have asked me how I did that. I only printed two layers, a dough and a green topping. Here's the secret. Those dinosaurs were in the back of the oven. I almost burned them. <laughs> so. My kids were once again suspicious, but I left them with the, the plate of 15 dinosaurs and I walked out of the room for about 10 or 15 minutes, came back and the dinosaurs were gone. Now it was my turn to become suspicious. <laughs> Where were the dinosaurs? Were they in the bottom of a toy box in a cave hanging out with the plastic toy dinosaurs? So I asked my kids, where are the dinosaurs? They boasted up, rubbed their tummies and said, we ate them all, can we have more? I couldn't believe it. It was the same recipe they had rejected a week prior and they ate every single one. My dinosaurs became extinct for a very good reason. <laughs> <laughs> so with 3D food printing, perhaps it can help kids eat healthier things, try newer foods, simply by changing the shape of it. And it doesn't just work for kids, it works for adults too. We eat with our eyes as much as our mouths. Food presentation is very important. So 3D food printing can help everybody explore different types of foods. So this is gonna be my last food example. So these are crackers, fish crackers, crackers in the shape of fish, not made out of fish. So we love our crackers in supermarkets. Sometimes we have a whole aisle of it, but sometimes the laundry list of ingredients in it, not so fresh, chemical sounding names expiration days that last for months or years. This is not natural food. It's not natural ingredients. Sometimes the list of ingredients reads more like a chemical list rather than a list of fresh ingredients. And even if you're lucky enough to find a package of ingredients that you actually understand all of them, what you don't know is exactly how much of those ingredients are in the package. So things that we should be limiting in our diet, such as salt, oil, and sugar, probably too much in those packaged foods. So what's the pain point of printing crackers. It's not the, the dough recipe, that's easy. Really easy, mashed potatoes, olive oil, salt, seasonings. Anybody can make that. The pain point of making crackers is more of a two-dimensional problem, not a three-dimensional one. So with 3D food printing, think beyond 3D, think 2D. The pain point is rolling out the dough really thin. If you were going to do it purely by hand, you're flouring your work surface, you're cutting your shapes, you're trying to peel those very thin shapes because we're making thin, crunchy crackers off of your floured board, trying not to rip the dough, remember it's thin, trying not to ruin the shape that you did and putting it in the oven. So 3D print it. So these crackers took 20 seconds a piece to print printed them really thin, we achieved that really crunchy cracker, no pain. The 3D printer took away all the pain points of rolling out that dough and shaping the crackers. So, 
what's the future of 3D food printing? Well, right now, you know it's science fact. It's not science fiction. We're already doing this. So I think you're going to see 3D food printers as a common kitchen appliance. I also think you're going to see a mashup of kitchen appliances functionality. So the food I showed you today, if it, re if it required cooking, we took it out of the 3D printer and we cooked it. But imagine a 3D food printer that cooks everything that you print. Everything that comes out is cooked. Your mini manufacturing plant has grown in functionality. So now perhaps your 3D food printer is going to replace your oven, replace your microwave. So with 3D food printing, I think it's going to follow the path of microwaves. When microwaves were first introduced to consumers in the 70s, people didn't understand it. They didn't get it. How did the food get hot but the walls of the microwave never did? Did it have radiation? Did it cause cancer? Why do I need a microwave oven? I have a perfectly good oven in my kitchen. Fast forward 30 years and 90% of US households have microwaves in them. I think you're going to see the same thing with 3D food printers, but on a much faster scale. We're a more tech savvy market these days. We adapt technology a lot faster, and the technology advances a lot faster. So I see that 3D food printers in the future will print a much wider range of foods and a much wider range of food textures. So I really do think 3D food printers will be in everybody's households. So now, if we can print more of our food, if we can print those fresh packages or fresh food that came in packages before, couldn't that even change the way food manufacturing industry works today? If I can print it, why do I need to buy it? And you know what? Food manufacturers know this. They're already looking into 3D printing to see how it's, how it's going to affect them. So let's print more of our food using fresh, real, wholesome ingredients. Let's make it healthy. Let's know exactly what we're eating. And let's get away from those packaged pre-made foods. Eat less of it, much less of it. And that adds up to eating healthier. So now every time I walk through a supermarket and I see these packaged, processed, pre-made foods, I automatically ask myself, can I print that? Can I make a healthier version of that? And now that we're at the end of this talk, I hope that you start doing that as well. Ask yourself, can I print that? And I thought that was an idea worth sharing. Thank you. <laughs>